Hi. We're going to do 159 and 160, so let's do it. Here we go. The mean score for a round of golf of Tiger Woods during the 1999 season and 2000 season was 6804 with a standard deviation of 2.4. Assuming these were independent and normally distributed, What's the probability of shooting two consecutive scores of 68, 66 or less? Okay, so we got uh, something like this. We got 68.04, and we know it's normally distributed, so we can assume that to the left and the right of the mean would be one standard deviation away. So that would be, let's see, let me do my calculations here. So that would end up being around 70 and around 66 here. So they're actually wondering, what would a score of a 66 or less be? So you're interested in knowing what this is, and that's the probability Excuse me, that's the probability of X being 66 or something less than. And so if we knew the area under this curve, we would have the probability of when X is less than 66 or equal to 66. And we could do that a number of ways. We could do it with our formula AP statistics, or we can just do it in the calculator. And then, if we, once we know this probability, we want two consecutive times. And so because it's independent, we can calculate the probability of two independent events merely by multiplying those probabilities. So I kind of already know, since this one standard deviation below the mean is uh, pretty close to 66, I can actually approximate that using my rules of 68. So I know 68% of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean, which means that um, that would be 34, and that'd be 34. And you know, there's half of the information is to the left, so that would leave me 16%. These are percentages, of course. So I kind of know that just to the left of this is going to be about 16% of the data. So I already pretty much know it has to maybe be these bottom two values. In fact, I'm pretty, pretty positive it's A because if you took 16% of the data and multiplied it by itself, you're going to get a number close to A. But let's go ahead and do it in our calculator here. So I'm going to turn my calculator on. And I definitely have random distribute, or excuse me, normally distributed. So I'm going to go to menu, st statistics. This is a distribution problem. And I'm going to do normal CDF because I have a lower bound looking at my picture here. I'm just going to leave, leave that crazy low number here because it goes on forever. My upper bound I want whoops sorry about that I'm just gonna start over because I don't like the way that ended up stats distribution normal CDF lower bound I'm trying to leave that there 66 is my upper bound my mean is 68.04 my standard deviation is 2.4 and Gonna hit OK. So I find that it is close to 16. It says the probability or the area under this curve is 0.197. And so if I now that I know that it's 0.197 or I guess 0.198. It's basically round up to 0.2. If I would take that and multiply it by itself, so the consecutive, so the probability of 
getting a score less than 66 would happen 20% of the time, and 20% times 20% is 0 0.04. We definitely have our answer. We could have also done it in our calculator. We can just square that answer. And yep, my answer would round up to 0 0.04. Same answer. 160. It says a spinner has an equal chance of landing on any one number, 0 to 10. So just making a quick sketch of this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 9, 10. So I'm imagining I have a spinner here. A little messy, not too bad. I have a spinner, and it says each has an equal chance of landing on an outcome. The student spins the spinner 100 times. So times means multiply. So it looks like this is a transformation question. And finds the total of those numbers. They repeat the experiment. We're totally okay with repeating experiments and they repeat it 150 times. What is the result of the trial? If they were plotted in a histogram, what would that histogram shape be? So very interesting question. So let's go ahead and figure out what we would expect here just by spinning it 100 times. So by doing that, the probability is just one in 10, correct? So let's figure out on average, because that's what our expected value is, on average, what would I expect to get? So I could get an outcome, I'm gonna go to my calculator, I could get an outcome of one, or two, or three, or four, or five, or six, or seven, or eight, or nine, or 10. And so I'm trying to figure out on average what I would get. So I'm gonna go ahead and, so if I add up all those outcomes, I get 55. And I want to divide by 10, because out of the 10 outcomes, and I end up getting a fraction. So this, you might want to use this more, a simpler calculator. But if I had to do that, 11 divided by 2, I get 5.5. So that is my average. My average outcome would be 5.5. So if I spun this spinner many, 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 many times, that would be my expected outcome, would be 5.5. Sometimes I would get any number of these because I have an equal chance of getting all of them. But if I totaled them all up, that would be the total. Okay, so now it says, and I do this 10 times. And so we know with means, if we want to multiply it by transformation rules, we can go ahead and just multiply it. So that would be 550. And that's why each of these say that. So I'm feeling like that's the right answer. I definitely was able to determine the mean. Now, what would be the actual shape of this? Well, it should be normally distributed. That's our answer A. Anytime we do a study and the value of n is greater than 30, we know that the distribution of these outcomes would make a normal curve. So a typical outcome, if you did this 100 times, you'd get somewhere around 550, and it pretty much would tend to clump right around there. And so that would definitely be normally distributed, and that's our answer. Thanks for joining us.